hi guys it's Aileen um, today I it's Friday the 24th I think of July I was uh, it was brought to my attention by Lisa over at supportive tarot that there are actually more uses for mugwort this is my kind of mugwort that I can harvest really easily um, around town here and I've actually, as a consequence of watching, <clears throat> sorry, her video yesterday, uh, tried out a new approach for myself. Um, and I've what I've done is I've basically used about, let me see, about this much in a mug uh, as tea and I've drunk that so i suppose it was like a mug this size more or less and what's this two teaspoonfuls or so of the leaves with a bit of the little buds in as well i have done a bit of research around the mugwort plant especially in german because you know europe and more languages so um me being very much a european centered person for me, that's something I can actually do. And the Germans use this stuff uh, a lot more often, I think, even than the French. Where I've also, you know, I've lived in France, I haven't lived in Germany. But, you know, what with one thing and the other and living close to the border and stuff, I have gotten to know those cultures fairly well. So, um, in German, it's actually possible to find quite a bit more um, let's say down-to-earth type research, not the pagan and witchy kind, but really, um, you know, how to plant it in your garden and how to use it and how to preserve it and whatever else, you know. So, um, what with reading that, I felt like, okay, so now I really haven't, haven't, I don't have to be kind of scared or apprehensive about using this as an infusion just an infusion, not a decoction. So I pour, put this in my mug, poured boiling hot water on top of it and let it steep for a bit. You could do a decoction where you actually sit this on the gas or on the stove with water and boil it. In that way, you would get a lot stronger uh, extract from this plant. Um, I haven't done that. I've just done the infusion. And I am stunned at the result, really, because I was expecting like a, well, from the flavor, first of all, the flavor is pleasant. I was expecting uh, something a lot more bitter and strong tasting and rather unpleasant. And it isn't. It's very, actually a very nice flavor, um, vaguely reminiscent of something like fennel or aniseed, but not that level of sweetness so you know a bit more green than that um this is something that i like i'm very much a person for you know tastes and flavors and smells and fragrances and stuff so <clears throat> sorry i will be coughing because i had just had lunch and cheese and things are still reacting so it's nothing wrong with me at all um taste is fine um, even if you uh, let it sit for a bit longer, I think I let it steep for maybe 10 minutes or so, it was quite fine. The other thing that I have to add to my little story here is that I also had a bit of cocoa, half a helping because I didn't have enough milk in the house to do a full mug, which was a good thing because otherwise I would have been really stoned. <laughs> Why? Because cocoa by itself is already, you know, Kind of a, uh, you know, pleasant, mild, mood-altering kind of a drink. Uh, but I add, often I add my valerian la lavender mixture to that. And that is valerian roots and lavender flowers ground up in the mortar. So it's actually quite strong. I only put in, for the both of us, uh, say in a normal mug, which will be like two thirds of this. So not a full mug of this because burp, you know, that's too much. But like uh, this much 
cocoa per person in total for that helping of cocoa or that level of serving I would add a quarter of a teaspoon I haven't got a teaspoon here for you to show you the size smallish type teaspoon not teeny tiny ones but uh, <laughs> it depends on you know milliliters is of course better to use but I have no clue at how, as to how much of the herbs that is actually in uh, in volume or in weight um, it's, it's not much so there was the valerian in my uh, drinky last night and then there was the mugwort tea afterwards with a bit of hot water on the side too uh, because that I tend to always kind of do that nowadays for hydration's sake you know there was a mild after the mugwort tea there was a mild level I think of what I would qualify as a different perception of things yes I was when I went to bed we went uh, it was like nine o'clock 9 30 ish in the evening fairly early still uh, we're still really tired so it's just going to bed to read or talk a bit and then uh, you know off to sleep as soon as it gets slightly dark as soon as it's sundown we are, you know, out like a candle. Um, and there was in that first hour or so that I was still awake, uh, kind of a sense of things being brighter inside me and around me. So like I could have, um, I was doing a bit of thinking. I was still thinking about my cat and stuff and it was okay on that end, certainly. Um, there's more that I could tell about that, but I won't go into that in too much detail at the moment uh, because it's the mugwort that I'm interested in to convey to you because this is an actual personal experience with the mugwort plant in a different way. I have used mugwort to, as a sort of an inhaling type smoke, um, so not to smoke in a like a joint or a cigarette or anything, but as a just like you burn sage to pur purify the house uh, for years on end. I think I've used that for 20 years at least. The past 20 years I've used Mugwort for that uh, always. Actually, it's my best viewed video on my channel. It's an age and a half ago that I recorded that, uh, which just shows you a stone bowl, uh, which is really a pot shirt with uh, Mugwort in and the smoke uh, coming out. It's a uh, to me, it has a grounding effect and it relaxes my, uh, it, it disconnects me from the world in a certain way. I have never felt that to be trippy in any way. I've never started like seeing things or other levels of perception to come to the forefront over, you know, the surface of whatever you call normal. Never. I've only, only ever burnt mugwort for its grounding effect it's like the whole world is just you know crazy and nuts and it's been a bit on the much side you know you just don't want to engage with the world anymore in the evening you can burn some of that stuff and it just you know takes the pressure off it it sets you back on your feet in your body in a way that's really very comforting and I've uh, I keep coming back to that that's actually why I always harvest mugwort what with Lisa's recipes that she shared with us uh, yesterday or earlier in the week. I just got around to watching it yesterday. Um, there was some stuff for, you know, how you can use it in the bath, which is probably, by the way, a different type of mugwort. This is the Artemisia, Artemisia uh, vulgaris, so the ordinary Artemisia mugwort that we have around these parts of the world. I have experience also with a, I guess it will be an absinthe type, wild mugwort-ish um, wormwood, is that the name? Yes, I think so. From the mountains, from the Alps, where it looks uh, different, the leaves are bigger, not so spiky, and the little flowery bits at the end... Let me see if I can show you some of that. Here, they look like little uh, plumes really stuck together. Can you see that? 
of little uh, flower buds really for the absinthe type uh, those are much looser and there's really little silvery white um, globes ball, balls of fluff in there that has a terrific bitter taste this absinthe type uh, wormwood herb it's nice the effect is very different it's also certainly a uh, kind of grounding in a way uh, in teas that is I have had used that only ever in teas you have to use like an infinitesimal amount two of those little flower buds in one humongous pot of tea is quite enough with you know other sweeter herbs in st stuck in you know mint or whatever you like um just to balance that out a bit and after like 15 minutes or so it will still get very bitter the bitter of that it's invigorating and it wakes you up in a way uh so this i have experience with using like a couple of times a year or so i harvested some last year in the mountains and i've still got a pot full and there's raspberry leaf in with that and it's like 90% raspberry leaf and maybe 10% or even less of the little bits of the uh, of the wormwood and I try to grasp always to get as much of the raspberry leaf and just a teeny tiny bit of the wormwood in and it's always too strong <laughs> it's so bitter oh the mm, incredible but it's invigorating it wakes you up and it like gives you like a slap in the face come on you know where we want to be up and doing now so this thing here back to the normal mugwort doesn't do that at all it's not invigorating it does not wake you up it relaxes the whole metabolism is my experience and i'm actually still quite uh, a lot more rested at the moment uh, today it's now uh, middle of the day and I will be you know I've been doing a couple of things and I'll be doing a couple more things uh, later today I feel quite uh, peppy and compared to the past couple of days where I was you know either depressed or exhausted or both <laughs> uh, at the moment I feel a whole lot better and it is because I could tell there's like the part of me that responds to the valerian because I've used the valerian in the cocoa uh, at least a dozen times in the past uh, six months or so we don't do this every week but on and off you know recently it's been quite a comfort it's something that makes you sleep really well but it's it works for me that works on the head and it doesn't work as much down down here whereas the mugwort works absolutely on the digestive tract it's also what I found on the German websites and I think in a lot of other places where you get a medicinal use described you know for plants and things um, this has uh, it's ha it has it also has a property of bringing on menstruation so it, it, it's uh, for digestion and for menstruation that's how they what they told me yesterday so I definitely uh, noticed the digestive uh, part you know in the sense that everything is just pulled down everything there is what I find striking and interesting is that the uh, there was tension inside my whole body in my organs that I didn't know was there so what happens for me and i suppose it's very human is that you're not completely okay feeling you know what with life and emotions and relationships and things changing or whatever you know or work and doing too much and too many things and too much confusion or too many demands or all of that that's sort of the psychological component on the emotional component to this to to your story and then there's the physical component of your your whole metabolism everything you know inside you that uh, has to deal with all that pressure long term i will be 54 in august and 
boy, have I carried around pressures and tensions all my life, forever. So it's stupid, but what you're going to do? You can meditate, you can do Tibetan bells, you can all sorts of things. This actually something that I harvested uh, for so many years and used only to smoke, you know, to fumigate, so to speak. I don't know if that's really the English word. Um, where you just, you know, set it, light it up and let it burn for a bit so the smoke goes up in the air. Um, I've never used it as tea because I was kind of wary of, of potential trippy experiences. I'm very careful with that type of thing. I don't want to go over the edge and disappear into La La Land, you know. That's not my... Uh, that's not my favourite way of going about life. Besides, I couldn't afford what with people depending on me and stuff. You know, you have to be responsible and aware and accountable and all that stuff. So, way too much. <laughs> way too much accountability. <laughs> I'm all about that, but, uh, you know. So, I notice now, as I sit here, that my organs have had a lot more rest. And the whole lot of them, including my lungs even, uh, from this two-thirds of this kind of mug uh, that I actually drank. Um, that was enough, really, to completely... Um, I'm trying to find a different word to describe it. It feels really nice. It's like... I suppose it's like um, rejuvenating, even. Yes, so that's pretty nice. And I will be doing this more often. There was another warning on the website that I uh, looked at for my intel. Uh, they said not to use this for more than a week uh, continually. They were not talking about any sensing experiences or any trippiness or any emotional reaction or any of that. They were just saying digestion and menstruation. Uh, but they said not to, you know, because... There's a, a, a component in this plant that's called 2-Joan. And it's actually, it gets compared to THC. I don't really think it's comparable to THC all that much. But then again, who am I? Experience-wise, I don't feel it's the same. Uh, because this mugwort doesn't fog your brain up at all. It, your brain shifts slightly. And it relaxes along with everything else in your body. So that's good. But it's not, I was never, I was never fuzzy or certainly not stoned or high or any of it. Other than the valerian, which tends to, you know, sort of knock me out at the end of the day, which is fine. But I'm still very much, I'm still capable of doing things I need to do. It's not that I am um, disconnected, really. So... Um, where was I? Not to overdo it. The two Joan, the thing is with the two Joan, it accumulates in the body. So it does get evacuated eventually, I think, I hope. Uh, I've read this elsewhere before, but it, it not immediately and not as quickly as THC does. So you have to take that into account. Now, I personally wasn't going to do this again tonight or even tomorrow night. Probably. I will use this sparingly. On and off, whenever I feel like, okay, so this would be a good moment for me to do this. Um, you know, like, for example, when we are on holiday, we will be leaving fairly soon. We will uh, be traveling in the car for quite a while. Then you don't get to walk as often. You don't get to stretch your muscles quite enough, you know. When you're stiff and you feel like you could do with a bit more metabolistic, me metabolic um, movement in your in yourself, that's the moment you would choose to uh, to use this. Yes, so, uh, but certainly not continually for a longer period, and you know, again and again, not because I think that's really dangerous. Uh, if they say don't do it longer, don't use it longer than than a week, then I would say okay. Uh, apparently that's 
fine. They haven't found nobody has uh, reacted adversely to uh, to that schedule, right? So that should be okay. It's not that it isn't okay. It's and I don't know what you what you um, what what the result is after a week. I personally would feel it. Uh, if it accumulates, I don't know. It's the whole Artemisia family. They're, I think they're great plants. They're fantastic. But it's always how are you going to use it and use common sense and check with yourself and with the people who are using it, you know, um, what's needed. You have to use it as needed only and not, like, go over the top. I may... Uh, at some point choose to do another run with this to find out about the uh, you know the slight alteration in awareness to see what that does because that was cool and interesting and it was also um, very it felt like something you could use to be creative with to do drawing or writing or something like that and to have a really a very pure access to your own creativity, that kind of thing. Certainly, yes. But also with that, in our lives that we lead nowadays, you can't do that every day, and you certainly don't want to do it for several days. On At least, that's not my style. I will always come back to normal uh, fairly quickly, you know. But sleeping really well, I have slept so deeply. And if I only have the valerian, and I tended to normally use a larger helping of the valerian now i didn't on purpose because i only had a like a half little mug of cocoa anyway uh so i halved all my uh, little additions to that and because i was going to do the mugwort as well i went really easy on the valerian it was there but uh i think that's actually a more pleasant dose for me um than a larger dose of uh, valerian lavender in my cocoa because that's just I get knocked out. <laughs> I get so badly. It's like boing, you know. And it, it's funny because it takes about an hour for the effect to come on. And by that time, I'm usually long in bed, you know. I, I'm reading or something. And my book just goes, ew. And I go, gone. You know, just, I'm, I may even still have my eyes open, but there's nobody home anymore. So that's what the valerian does. I'm comparing and talking about the herbs and the experiences and things. Hoping to, uh, you know, God, that's more, as more than 22 minutes. I'm going to buckle this up right now. I will post this and I will uh, reorganize my old harvest, last year's harvest of my markwort. They're huge plants. Look at that. They're like This is like, what you see now is half of the actual stalk. And they grow like... Um, Two meters high or something this is the right time to harvest so i will probably harvest some more because i've got like four or five stalks here but if i am going to also use it in the bath like lisa uh said or in your hair and stuff like that use the tea to go, go and stuff that into your hair that sounds like a really great plan i wonder what the effect of that will be because i'm so sensitive to all this stuff so mugwort galore all over and um, more to come. Thank you for watching again, once again. And uh, I hope I can, you know, you can tell that I'm a bit more peppy. All the uh, travails are so far are in the past now. And it is onward, uh, you know, doing a bit of reading and a bit of Marielle cards, edging and this and that. And, uh, you know, gathering up belongings for the holidays. So we will be going at some point and then I will probably be also be filming and maybe, maybe even posting from where I am because um, I will be um, having Wi-Fi. So that's excellent, right? See you then, okay? See you next week anyway. Have a nice weekend and uh, back in a, in a Wi-Fi, okay? In a Wi-Fi, in a whatever, a Jiffy. That's what it is. <laughs> there you go. Ciao for now. Thank you. Bye.